My name is Jenny Lee. I'm an actor. I mostly perform on stage and TV. I enjoy acting because I get to play different characters and entertain audiences. Sometimes I have to develop a certain accent or mannerism to make my characters realistic. Actors need a lot of talent to play different parts. I like playing baddies most of all, as they're usually interesting characters and fun to portray. This book is called Air Scare. It has a character who behaves very badly. As you read through the book with me, think about who that character is and what the kids in Team X think about her behaviour. Listen as I read parts of this book. Air Scare by Jan Burchett and Sarah Vogler. Turn to pages two and three and look at the diagram of Tiger's model plane, the wizard. The label show you what the different parts of the plane are called. Now turn to page four and listen as I read. Chapter one, The Wizard. Max and Tiger made their way through the crowd at the school gates. Tiger was carefully carrying a remote control aeroplane. The school had been doing a project on flight all term and some students had made their own planes. Tiger was particularly proud of his. He called it the Wizard. Now everyone was gathering on this sunny Saturday afternoon to see the planes in action. Mrs Mills, the principal, was going to judge which plane did the best display. The prize was some tickets to an air show. Did I tell you about the wizard being Tiger? Yes, said Max, you did. It's got a 50 centimetre wingspan, Tiger went on. You told me, smiled Max. Tiger pointed to the bit sticking up at the end of the tail. It's got a fully working rudder and ailerons on the wings that all makes it easy to steer. You told me that as well, joked Max, twice. And look at the streamlined fuselage. Okay, Tiger, grinned Max. It's the best plane ever. Max looked around the crowd. Oh no, he said with a shudder. There's Lucy. Why did she have to come? Lucy was always causing trouble. As she walked across the school grounds, Max could see that she was carrying something large and lumpy in a bag. She did make a plane for the project, shrugged Tiger, but it was terrible. I can't believe she'd enter that. I wonder what she's got in the bag then, said Max. Who cares, said Tiger. I'm going to practice. I have to launch the plane into the wind to lift it up into the air. He checked which way the wind was blowing and turned his plane to face it. Then he switched it on. It hummed into life. Next, Tiger turned on the remote control. The wizard ran along the ground, slowly at first, and then faster and faster. Tiger pressed gently on the up button, and the plane rose into the air to join the others that were buzzing around the sky. Wow, breathed Max. Smooth takeoff. That's nothing, said Tiger. Watch this. The wizard climbed steeply and then to Max's amazement, flipped over backwards and made a complete circle. Cool, gasped Max. I'll loop the loop. I've got plenty more tricks for the competition, Tiger grinned. Then all of a sudden, Tiger was knocked to one side. He nearly lost control of his plane. Chapter 2. Cheating in the Air Move over, said a loud voice. Give me some room. It was Lucy. She elbowed Tiger out of the way and bent down, carefully putting her lumpy bag on the ground. Then she undid it to reveal a sleek, gleaming model plane. Long blue ribbons hung from the tail. 
Make way for the air shark, she announced. Turn to pages 10 and 11 and look at the diagram of Lucy's model plane, the air shark. Remember to read the labels. Let's continue with the story. Turn to page 12. Max nudged Tiger. You said her plane was useless, he whispered. Tiger had just about managed to regain control of the whizzer. He snatched a quick look at the air shark. It was useless, he muttered. That's not the same plane. Max checked the competitor's board, where ten names were written. Well, whether it's hers or not, she's entered the competition. Max could see that Tiger was getting agitated. Never mind, he said quickly. You're last after Lucy. You'll have seen all the others, so you'll know who you have to beat. Maybe, said Tiger doubtfully. Watch this, everyone, said Lucy loudly. She launched the air shark into the wind. It sped up into the sky, engine roaring. It looked as if it could do some amazing tricks. But instead, Lucy steered it straight for a bright yellow plane that was in the middle of a roll. Smash! The air shark crashed into the side of the yellow plane. It didn't stand a chance. The yellow plane plummeted to the ground in a spiral. Whoops! sniggered Lucy. Sorry! Lucy's fingers flew over her remote control, sending the air shark into a steep dive. It bashed against a small biplane and snapped the propeller off. The plane dropped onto the school roof. Silly me, said Lucy with a nasty grin. I'm not very good at steering. Don't let her get near the whizzer, Max whispered to Tiger. Tiger pressed his steering button hard to the right and the air shark went speeding past. Phew, said Max. That was close. Then the air shark made a quick U-turn. Watch out, shouted Max. It was too late. Bang! The air shark had done a fast turn and slammed into the whizzer. Horrified, Max and Tiger watched the whizzer tumble from the sky. It crashed into the long grass at the edge of the school grounds. Chapter 3. The Search Lucy landed the air shark and began to smooth out its ribbons as if she hadn't done anything wrong. You've broken my plane, Tiger shouted. He was about to run over to her, but Max caught his arm. There's no time, he said. We've got to find the whizzer. It might still fly. Max and Tiger ran towards the edge of the school grounds where they had seen the plane crash land. They hunted up and down among the tangled grass but couldn't find the whizzer anywhere. Attention please, a voice boomed out from the loudspeaker. The grand flying competition is about to start. They heard a buzz of excitement from the crowd. All the other competitors made their way to the judges table. Oh no, wailed Tiger as the first plane took to the air. They're starting. Just then, Max's foot touched something hard. He looked down. It was the whizzer. Here it is, he yelled, pulling it out of the grass. Tiger inspected his plane. The shiny red fuselage was all scratched and scraped. Look what Lucy's done. He wailed. Never mind that, said Max firmly. Does it work? Tiger flicked the switch on the plane. Nothing happened. She has broken it, he cried. I'm out of the competition and it's all her fault. Chapter 4. 
Chapter 4 Max Has a Plan Max had never seen Tiger so upset. Don't give up now, he said. I'm sure we can get the whizzer working. Tiger lifted up a panel on the side of the plane, near the cockpit, and peered inside. I can't see anything wrong. Check the battery, suggested Max. Tiger poked his fingers inside the small space. That's it. One of the wires has come loose. There isn't any power. Can you fix it? asked Max. Tiger tried to prise the battery out. No, it's stuck. Max thought fast. I know, he said. I'll shrink and fix it for you. You hold the remote and get ready. As soon as I've finished, I'll jump clear and you can take off. Great plan, Max, said Tiger gratefully. You'll be able to reach the wires better from inside the cockpit. Tiger carried the plane back to the edge of the school grounds and put it down facing the wind, ready for takeoff. Max checked to make sure no one was looking. Luckily, everyone's eyes were on the display in the air. Max turned the dial on his watch. He pushed the X and... Micro Max climbed up the side of the whizzer and in through the cockpit hatch. Tiger heard everyone clapping as another plane finished its display. Hurry up, Max, he whispered. It'll be my turn soon. Chapter 5. Take off. Max crawled to the back of the plane on his hands and knees. He grasped the loose wire in both hands and began to pull. It took all his strength to bend it towards the battery terminal. Time was running out. The air shark had taken off. That meant Tiger would be next. Tiger watched as Lucy made the air shark twist and turn in the sky, blue ribbons streaming behind. Then she brought it down low over everyone's heads making it release a plume of smoke. It was going to be hard to beat. Inside the cockpit of the whizzer, Max was still trying to bend the wire back towards the battery terminal. He sat down so he could put all his weight into it. Suddenly, there was a satisfying click and vroom, vroom, burst into life. Oh no, said Max. Tiger must have forgotten to flick the plane's off switch. The plane began to move. Max scrambled towards the front of the cockpit. He was about to climb out and jump clear when the front of the plane tipped up. The plane began to take off. Max slid back and the cockpit hatch slammed closed. Tiger, help, he yelled. But Tiger couldn't hear him with all the noise from the cheering crowd. He didn't even know the plane had taken off. He was too busy watching the air shark. Help! shouted Max again desperately. Chapter 6. Out of Control Did you see that, Max? asked Tiger. Lucy will be hard to beat. Tiger looked over his shoulder, down at the ground. Max? Then he looked up. Oh no, he said, as he saw the whizzer climbing into the sky. He quickly picked up the remote control and moved the joystick. The whizzer wasn't responding. The whizzer climbed higher and higher. Max stumbled to the front of the plane. He crawled into the plastic seat and strapped himself in. Meanwhile, down on the ground, Tiger was desperately fiddling with the remote control. He couldn't get it to work at all. He wasn't worried about the competition now. He was just worried about getting Max down safely. Lucy, on the other hand, was very pleased with her performance. She turned smugly to the crowd. Competition.
competition's over, she announced. Guess who's the winner? She was about to land the air shark when she saw the wizard appear over the trees. Her smile froze. I thought I'd got rid of that one, she muttered. I'll show him. She turned the air shark expertly around. Now I'm going to read chapter two again, and I'd like you to read aloud with me. Turn back to page nine. Chapter 2. Cheating in the Air Move over, said a loud voice. Give me some room. It was Lucy. She elbowed Tiger out of the way and bent down, carefully putting her lumpy bag on the ground. Then she undid it to reveal a sleek, gleaming model plane. Long blue ribbons hung from the tail. Make way for the air shark, she announced. Turn to page 12. 